With the current Skink and Croxagore Renaissance, I was excited to see this replay from Anti Kaiju featuring uh, Skink Moses himself to Henowin with his tablets and lots of Skink Bros facing off against the Chaos Dwarfs. So let's take a look at the build here before they clash. We've got to Henowin here, Skink Cohort as a frontline, Cohort of Sotek on the left flank. Got some Bastildons, two Feral Bastildons, and three Croxgoers through the center. On the flanks, got some Feral Cold ones and some Fire Leech Bolas up in the sky. Uh, no Fire Leech Bolas on this side, just Feral Cold ones. Against them for the Chaos Dwarfs, Sorcerer Prophet of Hashut. We've got the Demon's Tongue, Iron Demon as well. That looks like some Dwarf Warriors front line with some Laborers saturating numbers as a second line, excuse me. Top Goblin Wolf Raiders with spears and bows in the back, including the Regiment of Renown, Oglicons, Wolf Boys, and also the Regiment of Renown, Hashit's Dark Ravagers. So let's get things rolling here. And it's going to be a fairly quick clash as it's uh, Altdorf Outskirts, one of the smaller land battle maps where you do start fairly close together. They could honestly move the deployment zones back a little bit on this map, and I think that'd be totally fine, but... Iron Demon's going to immediately charge on in, get the Flamethrower attack going against the Cohort of Sotek, immediately get friendly fired by their own Fire Leech Bolas as well as they try and shoot the uh, Iron Demon there. But uh, Bastildon, Feral Bastildon kind of acting as a mass blocker, just immediately gets an attack order clicked on, and because of how fast the Cohort of Sotek are, uh, they're going to actually be able to catch up. Also, this kind of rock forcing the uh, Demon's Tongue to take an unfavorable angle. Feral Cold Ones also charge around the flank. Going to trade okay against the Laborers and the Hashed Stark Ravagers, especially as we see a Flock of Doom being unleashed at long range there. Uh, from Tehedowin, who himself is getting an engagement with Sorcerer Prophet. Rock scores and Skinks charging on in. And, uh, ooh, I see it going. Where is it? Oh, there it is. A swing and a miss, sadly, as the uh, dwarfs are able to dodge that orbital bombardment. Yeah, just a nice clean miss there from Tehenowin, but I appreciate the effort of uh, trying at least. And this big blobby mess of a wood fight here as well. Hard to tell what's going on in the forest. Definitely looks cool with all the glowy effects, but uh, if we take a look at the actual banners here, definitely seems like the Chaos Dwarfs are trading very well. Uh, mostly just killing Feral Cold Ones, though, and as Croxgore is another units of quality start to mix in. The Hashed Stark Ravagers might find themselves a little bit isolated there as all the Hobgoblins and Laborers and whatnot rout. Iron Demon also have a little bit harder of a time performing effectively in the woods there. Meanwhile, across the field, we see Croc scores doing what they do best, which is to smash armored infantry. It's Chaos Dwarf Warriors just uh, getting absolute paddling right now. Much to the joy of the Imperial Spectators on the wall over there on the other side. And when, again, matched up against the Sorcerer Prophet, we got a nice kaiju battle right here. A little bit of a uh, cheeky fire from the side of the Chaos Dwarfs. Going to do some damage, especially as uh, Uncle Khan's Wolf Boys make him additionally weak to fire. Of course, the Vile of Hashut will make him even more weak to fire, so he's definitely in a time of great danger. As the Sorcerer Prophet charges down once more. Now, very, very tough stuff as Tehenowin takes a couple of big hits. Now, the Vial makes him quite weak to fire. Thankfully, it's not going to last too long. Uh, layering some spells kind of after that. But uh, he's wisely just avoiding combat during all of this. Kind of wasting the uptime of it. Looks like a, a Demon's Tongue, though, is not wasting any uptime as that continues to cycle charge and raid across the lines of the Lizards. Speaking of Lizard Lines, getting some reforming here. Tenowin with some strength. Looking to unleash some more power, perhaps. We'll see. Fire Leech Bull is getting hit in the air by the Sorcerer Prophet. That's kind of nice, though. They're distracting him, even though it is some value being taken out, certainly. Um, yeah, he's not, like, going after Tehenowin or other higher value targets during this time as well. Ooh. Going after Oglocon's Wolf Boys, who react just a hair too late. A few of their models get zapped. I don't think it actually kills any of them, but it looks very impressive, certainly. Kind of wish that did more damage, to be honest. How much you pay for the, uh... Engine of the Gods. Yeah, he is immune to contact effects, though, which I guess doesn't matter a ton for this matchup. Like, I'm thinking through. It doesn't th seem like 
they have a lot of contact effects, but this right here might be important against, uh, like, Nurgle? I don't know, it could be tricky because you don't have any healing if you take Tenwin, or your healing is relatively limited, I should say, to only the Rev Crystal. But, uh, yeah, maybe I'm just trying to think other high contact effect matchups. It's interesting. It's kind of a, maybe a little bit gimmicky. Tenwin himself is quite expensive. As we saw yesterday with Teclas, assuming I actually re released that one yesterday. Uh, Flock of Doom can be very effective in just accruing value over time, but of course, Tenwin doesn't have the same Winds of Magic generation and uh, Spell Mastery as Teclas, so he's not going to be quite effective as a, f a Flocker. He is quite the Flocker, but uh, not quite as good a Flocker as te Teclas. <laughs> uh... Indeed, the Fire Leech Bulls continue firing in Demon's Tongue. It's basically the only thing left at this point. The Demon's Tongue, the Sorcerer Prophet, the Hashish Stark Ravagers. Although, they are probably going to be enough to... Well, I don't know if they will be enough to actually win the day here. It's tough to say. Especially with Tehenowin still alive and both these Bastildons could potentially go 3v1 here. I'm going to see one final blob fight ensue. As another flock of doom goes off here. Single entities for the Chaos Dwarfs. Trying to work down these infantry units, doing damage to the prox scores, but uh, not able to really get at the single entities of Lizardmen. Anti Kaiju just wisely kind of keeping them back for the time being, using them more or less as bait. The Demon's Tongue does actually come through. This might be a good opportunity to go 3v1 here, but it looks like the Sorcerer Prophet also trying to push through there. But uh, during all that time, the line troops for the Chaos Dwarfs are just suffering. So, again, the Hanawin can just screen through, use the Bastildons to block, and just avoid that engagement once again. He let his Skinks and Croxigors do the fighting for him as they kind of saturate in. We're gonna get some free rear attacks. Croxigors, basic Croxigors, not the best at this, but in a surround at the very least, with their 31 melee attack and 110 weapon strength all skinked up, they'll uh, they'll be able to do some damage over time, certainly, as long as Tehenowin can stay alive and Anti-Kaiju can stay away from army losses, but let's see, he's definitely got some enemies coming back. Ash at Stark Ravagers in particular are going to be fairly dangerous with their ranged attacks, I would think, but let's see if they just charge. It's possible they might just charge. Fire Leech Bullas also could perhaps provide some overwatch here. Another nice flock of doom there. Doesn't actually hit any multi-model units, but it's going to do a tiny bit of damage, I guess, to both of these single entities here. Who are taking damage slowly over time, but it's not looking great for the Lizardmen. They're running into significant leadership issues. So let's see. Tehenowin gets in, in an engagement with the Ravagers and some Chaos Dwarfs. Oh, this looking risky. This might be army losses for the Lizardmen. Can they continue to hold? We got a little dark subjugation there on Tenowin, debuffing his melee defense. But the response for a flock of doom, perhaps the backbreaking flock of doom, as it does actually like lead to a few of these units just straight up shattering here. Uh, the Bastildons and Tenowin finally in the 3v1 they've been dreaming of around, well, now 2v3. That's okay. Demon's Tongue more powers itself into this engagement. Oh, Tenowin's so low, though. He's down to, like, a 1,000 HP as the Hashit Stark Ravagers are just getting rear attacks on him, and he actually routes. There's no way. This has to be army losses for the Lizardmen, right? There's no way the Bastildons actually hold on to it. Uh, Focus Instinct being used to stop the Rampage, and the Lizardmen are going to desperately YOLO in. I honestly cannot believe they haven't hit army losses <laughs> yet. Oh, Tenowin goes down. That's got to be it, right? Right? There's Surely there's no way single bestilled on can hold out. Yeah, it immediately goes out of control. The Ash Storm. I think that's going to be victory for the Chaos Dwarfs. Just too much single entity fighting power. Not quite enough anti-large for the Lizardmen there. So, yeah, sad end for Tehenowin. But, fun one nonetheless. Very well played to green one and to anti-kaiju both. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, the Croc scores did well. Just not quite well enough. Again, the lack of anti-large, I think, was the biggest thing here. He had plenty of anti-infantry tools, but just needed a little bit more. Even just trading these Fire Leech Bullets, well, I mean, they did okay, but trading them out even just for, like, Sora Spears for a backline to help in that final engagement against these 
Large units would definitely have helped. Obviously, um, yeah, there's a few few things you could do to supplement that. But overall, Tedwin himself really cannot be argued with. 3,000 value, 29, or sorry, 23,000 damage dealt, 3,280 damage value. Very impressive stuff. The Feral Bastillodons also, I mean, they're basically just tanks. They're not going to output an insane amount of damage themselves, but nice to have them on the roster, certainly. And Croc Scores did a decent job, but ultimately killing just some Chaos Dwarf Warriors was not enough, as the Green One's power units here all performed very well. Over 2,000 value on the three of them. Uh, Light Cavalry also, well, a little bit of a mixed bag, but the Archers at least did great. The Aguacan's Wolf Boys and the Wolf Raiders with those. The rest of the units were just glorified roadblocks, meat shields, meat bags, whatever you want to call them. But they did their job of getting killed, I guess. <laughs> Same thing, I guess, on a lot of the chaff side for the Lizardmen. Only one Vril Cold one actually does pay for itself. So, interesting battle for sure. I thought Antikaiju had that at certain points, but the green one was able to just sustain and keep those single entities rolling. Keep that demon's tongue rolling. Uh, if only other war machines in the game, like the Doom Wheel or Steam Tank, were quite as good as the Iron Demon is. It would be very good for Empire and Skaven and some other factions. But anyway, that's the discussion for another day. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.